This bottle of raw milk says on it right here, not for human consumption. It literally says on here, for intermittent feed use only for dogs and cats. But I've been drinking this for more than a year. I will tell you the story of raw milk, its god tier benefits for hormonal function as well as gut health. I'll expose the demonization of raw milk by governmental organizations and a certain mega corporation by the name of Monsanto. I'll give you my personal experience, teach you where to find the stuff, and also clear up the whole controversy between A1 and A2 milk. I'll give you the full milk tier list and tell you exactly which milks you should consider and which ones you should reject. Go, 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 go. That being said, everything in this video is my own personal views and my experience. This is not medical advice. See, most people don't know this, but drinking raw milk isn't even that risky. If you actually run the numbers and look at how many people have actually died or gotten sick due to raw milk versus other foods in general, raw milk doesn't really stand out as a massive public health hazard at all. I mean, think about lettuce. Every, every now and then you always hear this headline, people died or got sick because of an outbreak of E. coli in lettuce in like Chipotle or something. But there's no movement for banning lettuce. And yet, in many states, it's a felony to sell raw milk. The industrial revolution and its consequences have been a disaster for the human race and definitely for cows. As industrial plants grew and more people moved towards cities and got clustered in these claustrophobic cities, they brought their cows with them. And these cows, they were living under horrible, torturous conditions. And to be fair, the humans themselves were living in very bad conditions, so I understand it. But these cows were ridden with parasites, which is a separate topic. They were living with their own feces. They were living in extremely stressed environments. And so they were immunocompromised and when they produced milk, yeah, this milk was not good for people, got them sick. And of course, the industrial revolution is always there for the rescue. The technique of pasteurization, which is nothing more than just heating the milk, basically kills the milk. It kills the milk. Milk is supposed to be a living food. Milk has living organisms in it, which actually aid in digestion and gut health. It has enzymes in it, which actually help you to digest the milk. So when you pasteurize it, you lose the enzymes, you lose the living microbes, and you just have this dead liquid, which is chemically the same as raw milk, but biologically different. So speaking of pasteurization, I said that pasteurization essentially kills the milk. And this is exactly why a lot of people who are lactose intolerant, those who cannot buy and drink the store-bought milk, they are actually fine drinking raw milk. This is because raw milk actually is easier to digest because the bacteria in there and the enzymes in there actually make the body more able to actually digest the milk. And I suppose it goes without saying that raw milk is a probiotic. It helps the gut microbiome. And here's what happened in the grand scheme. So big farms which could afford the pasteurization equipment, they would pump out huge volumes of milk. And because they had increased the shelf life through pasteurization, they could drive down the cost and they could therefore outcompete all the small farms which were making an honest day's living by giving you raw milk. And so today we end up in a situation where to buy raw milk can be challenging. Luckily, I have a solution for you. I'll teach you exactly where to get raw milk. Without any milk. But of course, the bigger problem is the artificial hormone issue, the RBST issue. So a lot of countries have banned RBST, but not the US though. So what happened here is there's a genetics company called Genentech and they created this artificial hormone called RBST. And eventually Monsanto came to own the, like the IP, the intellectual property for creating that stuff. And just understand the, understand this properly. So they take the cows, they inject them with this artificial hormone, which causes them to lactate more and therefore produce more milk. What this does to the cows is truly inhumane. It causes the cows' mammary glands, their breast tissue, to come overtaxed and diseased. These cows have a ch higher chance of going lame. These cows also have a weakened immune system, which now means that you have to pump these cows full of antibiotics to keep them alive. And this apparently is the more healthy option as compared to raw milk. And despite all this, the FDA says that milk with and without RBST are the same thing. And of course, I haven't even touched on the topic of xenoestrogens. It should be pretty obvious that the artificial hormone which literally causes cow to lactate more is a xenoestrogen. Xenoestrogens are basically estrogen-like compounds which will cause a man to get more feminine traits. And it's certainly not good for females either because it essentially outcompetes with natural female estrogen and causes serious harm to the female reproductive system as well. So it's no joke. And it's certainly not the only hazard here. So grain-fed cows get, understand this. So grain is already a problem because grain gets moldy and mold contains something called ZEA, which is a xenoestrogen. That's certainly a problem on itself, but there's even more to it. 
when cows eat grain instead of grass the rumen so the rumen is a part of the cow's digestive tract it becomes more acidic than it's supposed to and what that means is the e coli which might be present in the digestive tract evolved to become acid resistant why is that a problem for you it's because your digestive system the digestive system of humans is a pretty remarkable piece of equipment our digestive acids can destroy e coli most of the time but if you feed cows with grain and the e coli in their gut becomes acid resistant now that e coli when it enters your gut is still acid resistant and this is the stuff that can actually make you sick so that's why i get my milk from grass fed cows producing raw milk <laughs> there was a farm in maine which wanted to put on their milk bottles a label which said we don't use artificial hormones and Monsanto came for them with their entire army of gremlinous verminous lawyers because they said that if that farm in, in Maine said that their milk was free from RBST they were implying that milk that does have RBST is inferior that is to say Monsanto's so-called milk was inferior which it is and they actually took that farm to court and that farm was forced to have a disclaimer on their label saying that the FDA does not see a difference between milk with RBST and milk without RBST. How twisted is that? A farm doesn't even have the liberty to say that they don't use artificial hormones. That's how twisted the system behind this is because of how much money is involved. When that FDA tells me that the very same kind of milk which my ancestors have been drinking for hundreds of thousands of years is actually the enemy, and their factory farmed ultra processed dairy product which barely is milk is the safer option i find myself rejecting them in a world where the government legalizes alcohol and weed and prohibits the sale of raw milk to consumers and when the cdc recognizes raw milk to be a public health hazard i have very little patience so now the question becomes is it worth it and the answer is definitely yes definitely been worth it for me for two reasons specifically one is the joint health reason so raw milk contains something called Wolzen factor which basically helps heal and improve joint health this was personally important to me because almost a year ago i took an injury to the right elbow and left knee which really put me out of the gym and i'm only now slowly getting back into it and then finally we have of course the gut microbiome benefits which are the easiest to understand this stuff literally contains live bacteria which is why i will not leave this on the table for very long I'll keep it in the fridge as soon as this video is done. And finally, we come to the actionable steps. I'm going to break down exactly how, where, and when to consume this milk, right? So the easiest way to get milk, like how, how I get it, is from local grocery market. So just literally search on Google, organic grocery near me, and you'll often find one. I lived in this small little town in Indiana for, what, six years now. And only two years ago did I realize there was a small, cute little organic grocery store literally 10 minutes away from where I live. So if you don't search for it, you're not going to find it. I'll link in the description below to a website which will find local farms near you. It's called realmilk.com and it will link you to the nearest farm which produces raw milk. <coughs> A1 versus A2 milk. What's all that entire controversy about? All right, I'll make it super simple for you. I'm not trying to waste your time. A2 milk is good, A1 milk is bad. So it all comes down to the breed of cow which produces it and the protein structure in the milk itself. So when A1 milk is digested, it can break down in some people into something called BCM7, which is an inflammatory substance. And not only that, it even seems to have an effect on opioid receptors. Yes, weird stuff. Now, not everybody reacts the same way. For you, it may not matter. For me, I just want to keep it safe. A2 is more digestible, so I'm just going to go for A2 if I have the choice. If you're getting raw milk from a farm, you can actually ask them what breed of cow they use, and you can just Google it and find out what kind of milk they produce. In the US, it's mainly two breeds, Holstein and Jersey cows. Jersey cows produce A2, Holstein cows produce A1, so you want to look for Jersey cows if you can find them. And finally, we must discuss chocolate milk. Chocolate milk, as you know, comes from brown cows and is known to increase testosterone by 69.69%. <laughs> but for real though, so um, raw milk actually contains a lot of CLA, which is conjugated linoleic acid, which does actually improve testosterone. And I have some good news. So the tide is turning and I see this in real life. So one year ago when I started purchasing raw milk from the little grocery store I mentioned, they would often just run out of raw milk because so many people were coming and grabbing them. Which tells me there's a demand growing for this stuff and there's an awareness growing about raw milk. And what happened was 
Nowadays, they don't run out of milk because the farm which produces it had enough money, enough resources to purchase more cows. So it's happening right now, boys. So this movement of moving towards natural foods is happening right now. And I want you to capitalize on this. I want you to create businesses which literally produce better stuff. You don't have to invent anything new. Just produce better stuff, more natural, less toxic stuff. And just watch your business grow over the next five to 10 years. Companies which make real authentic products are growing and they're making money. If you told people that applying animal fat on your skin is actually better than any product out there in the drugstores and that you don't need like a whole bunch of products and you use one product, they probably look at you funny. Except that companies like Vintage Tradition and plenty others have been growing year after year. This is possible because of this awareness which is growing currently. Now is the time to create products which are genuinely better than the legacy stuff. Because the market is there, the opportunity is there, it's time for you to get all into it. I have a full esoteric nutrition course which literally breaks down everything you need to know about hormonal health, metabolic health, gut health, and everything you could possibly want to know about nutrition. So if you're interested in that, it's included for free within my private community. The link's in the description. <laughs> Now I'm going to tell you which milks are worth consuming. On the top, the king, we have, of course, raw milk, not pasteurized, not homogenized. And this can be either cow milk or goat milk or sheep milk or camel milk, if you can find that. That's the highly esoteric option. If you have freaking camel milk, then good for you, man. Below that, you have something called low temperature pasteurized, non-homogenized. This is something you'll find in some grocery stores, not all of them, but this is also a good option. I would 100% recommend that. And I should note that the both options I've mentioned so far, I assume that they are grass-fed, grass-finished. Then we start moving on to the options which I don't consume. Pasteurized, ultra-pasteurized, the stuff in the cartons. So let me explain this. So milk that you find in cartons in your grocery store, that's not just pasteurized, that's ultra-pasteurized. At that point, I would consider it just to be another processed food and I would dismiss it. And then even lower than that, we have skim milks. We have the 2%, 1% and skim milk. At that point, like, why? Why would you drink such a thing? That's barely even milk. So yeah, that's an easy rejection. And under that we have, of course, the nut milks and soy milks. Why would anybody drink something literally called nut milk? Just based on the name alone, I would not consume such a thing. Of course, bottom of the barrel, we have your soy milk. So really, you don't even have that many options. And of course, I should just have a disclaimer saying none of this is a dietary recommendation. And if you don't have access to this, I would suggest going and getting kefir instead. Kefir is a, um, a fermented product. And I should say fermented products across the board are really good. One for the microbiome benefits, but also because fermentation itself destroys estrogens. So you could find buttermilk, yogurt, kefir, all these are good options. So first, I'm gonna have to shake this thing. This is non-homogenized milk, which means that the cream will basically float to the top. So open this up, pour myself some raw milk purchased literally just today. So question, how does raw milk taste? Raw milk tastes rich. It tastes velvety. It tastes a little bit sweet too, because the f this is the first day, right? This is literally the first day I got it. So it contains a lot of the sugar still in there. So it tastes wonderful. And it even has a little chunks of cream in it, which makes it even more delectable. But every day that passes, the bacteria is gonna consume some of that sugar. So it will lose some of its sweetness, which is fine, it's still nutritious. But I'm just pointing that out because it's not that your milk is going bad, it's just that some of the sugars have been consumed. And raw milk will stay good for seven days. So when should you drink this? This is the ultimate post-workout snack. There's literally nothing which gets better than this when it comes to post-workout. But of course, like I'm not your boss, man. You can drink this anytime. There's there's no like right time or wrong time. Go, 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 go. 